What's up everyone, V here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Marvel Legends Deluxe Green Goblin as he appears in Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes, this is Willem de Goat himself as he appears in the phenomenal movie Spider-Man No Way Home. I've gone over my thoughts on Spider-Man No Way Home and my opinions on the past three No Way Home reviews, technically four if you count the three-pack, and uh, again, I'll briefly summarize it by saying I love the movie so much. It's my favorite Spider-Man movie. It uh, it makes my heart warm. It brings me so much joy that I don't care about the flaws. If it if it brings me joy and entertainment, and I love it, it could have the worst script ever. I'm still gonna give it a high rating. I love it so much, and he is one of the main reasons. Willem Dafoe is phenomenal as the Green Goblin. He's phenomenal. Back in that first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire back in 2000-something, I want to say 2001, 2002, I'm not 100% sure. But he's phenomenal in that first Tobey movie, and what is it, 20 years later, he, he comes back and he kills it again, if not even better, this time around. He's a great villain. I want to see more of him. I want to see more Green Goblin, because I just love Green Goblin in general, but also... I don't ever want to see Green Goblin in live action again unless it's Willem Dafoe because he just eats it up. Like, he did such a phenomenal job that in the Tasm movies, they were like, we're just going to do a completely different route with Green Goblin because we know we can't top that. And even though he didn't really get the best screen time, there was no way Harry Osborn in Tasm 2 was even going to come close to the crown that Willem Dafoe has as Green Goblin, like, he is one of the greatest comic book villains ever. Like, he just, he's perfect. He's just phenomenal, and he's phenomenal in this movie, and, yeah, and the, this is, of course, his look in No Way Home, kinda. The mask's a little not accurate, but we'll get into that when we get further into the review i wanted to start out with the mask on because i will switch it to that more movie accurate look but i just wanted to show him off with the mask first because i prefer the masked head i love the goblin mask like yeah defoe kills it without the mask but also at the same time i love how that goblin mask just looks so good i love it so much and uh, i'm so glad this figure comes with it because i was worried because i really wanted a figure with the goblin mask because i think there's only one other figure of this defoe goblin and that's from literally early 2000s toy biz so it's not not that great of a figure but yeah and i i was hoping they would release both looks but they just decided to throw the helmet in with the uh end of the movie look and i'm perfectly fine with that because it looks great this is how i keep it but I will showcase that other stuff. I just wanted to show it off first with the mask. And I got him in a cool flying pose. Got the camera up higher, so if the audio is slightly off or different than usual, that's it. And I want to start this off by saying I made a error in my last review, which was the uh, No Way Home, Peter Parker, Tom Holland. Yeah, they're all Peter Parker. Uh, go check out that one. That's a pretty uh, interesting figure. But I said that the unmasked head that he comes with was first seen in the iron spider and iron man two pack review not review Ooh, i'm not reviewing that the iron man and iron spider two pack and was in the just red and black walmart exclusive no way home spidey that is wrong that's a completely different unmasked head that's this one. This one first appeared in the Ned and Peter 2-pack, I believe. And this is technically its second appearance. I forgot this head even existed, I'll be honest, because it's not that great. This one's miles better. The hair looks so much better. Looks so much more like Tom Holland. But yeah, I want to correct that because I was completely wrong. But yeah, um... Uh, take one last good look at him on the glider, because this is probably the last time you'll ever see him on the glider in this video because it's a bit difficult to get him on the glider but besides that this is like a phenomenal figure like a lot of people are saying it's like figure of the year their favorite marvel legends and i understand why it's great but before we get into little gobby boy we're gonna get into the packaging and like i said he is a deluxe i mean that's kind of obvious 
from the glider. So he was probably 40 50 A little pricey, but it is definitely worth it because he's great. And this is the normal, like, windowless packaging. Although, he did have the cardboard, but he also had, like, I think, a, if I remember correctly, a plastic tray, which was odd. Because at that point, just have the window. I mean, this is different than the carded, is what I'm trying to say. And you got an actually decent glam shot of Green Goblin. Usually the CGI renders on the front of the boxes look, um, interesting. Warning, Spider-Man Away Home 4 Plus, Hasbro, Marvel Legends series, Green Goblin. Interesting artwork. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I, I feel like it doesn't really capture Defoe well, but... On the side, you get that 3D render of him just in a natural pose, and that artwork on the side again. Again, I just feel like it doesn't capture Defoe, but it still looks pretty cool. And on the back, got a nice glam shot of the figure, all his accessories. The glider, oh, you can, uh, can move it, even though moving it kind of knocks him off the glider. Spidey logo, words. Let's bring Gobby back in here, and look at that. Uh, this is the first time I ever, like, put him on the stand with the glider and everything. And I, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, this is kind of difficult to put in, and it's kind of difficult to balance. You have to have the glider kind of leaning forward. But, I mean, I feel like it looks cool. I mean, let's just get a 360 of that. He's kind of in an awkward pose, but yeah. You can move these out, but every time I do it, it's... Maybe you get a position, work with the ankle joints and leg joints, but every time I move the wings of the glider out he kind of just falls off and since he's still on the glider i'll just do the comparison here he is next to the other giant deluxe release a uh, spidey villain in the form of vulture like yeah spidey villains the they do not shy away from giant metal contraptions that allow them to fly i mean they look good together it sucks that we never got this duo, but we got Vulture and Morbius. Uh, yeah, let's hope they rectify that problem. But yeah, even though he didn't appear in it, we were so close to a Sinister Six, but they uh, didn't give it to us. And uh, yeah, looks great. Uh, I'll just demonstrate what I mean. Whenever I do this, yeah, his foot just comes off. But yeah, let's just get him off the glider, because we'll be talking about his accessories now. And he comes with a decent bit. Um, nothing too phenomenal, but basically all you really need. Uh, let's just talk about the glider first, because I'm going to lower the camera for the figure, so might as well just talk about the glider, since the camera's still up. And it's really cool. Um... It's got a few issues. These are removable, and they really help because it's kind of hard to put his foot on when it's tabbed on. But what I like to do is just slide it on the foot and tab it in when it's off, and then just peg it in. Makes it way easier because when you try to get in that, you got to push it down, and there's no stability on the back besides that bump, so it's kind of difficult, and this makes it so much easier. Also, when you split it, like, it does go very far, so maybe not split it all the way. Maybe that that probably would actually look really good. You'd probably have to work with the ankle joints and the position of the legs. Someone who's good at posing figures would probably have a field day with this. I'm not good at that. Like, when you open it all the way, he, like, struggles to stand. It looks cool. It does have this clear base, which, be careful. Getting this ball in is tough, and I've heard a lot of people say it broke. Because that's, I gotta say, the No Way Home Wave's phenomenal, but a lot of things like to break in the wave. And uh, yeah, it's really tight, but it does kind of hold it up well. Uh, you probably want it leaning, but when you bring it in, they kind of clash together, which is a little annoying. But yeah, and it looks great, just getting into the detail there. Like, look at that, it's got this nice texture, the purple's painted beautifully. I mean, look at that. On the front, you got a little vent in there you can't even see that there we get a little vent in there some under detail got some like missiles over here a little rubbery so you don't you know you're not gonna kill yourself with it all the spikes are actually oh, these these two actually actually these two these four spikes actually aren't rubbery they're actually just solid plastic that's shocking got some green down there which looks nice and some like pistons and just that 
beautiful sculpt for the rest of the glider. It looks great. And then you got the thrusters on the back, looking cool and gobbinly. I'm assuming, I think this is where the, the pumpkin bombs come out of. If I remember correctly, I don't remember. I've only seen No Way Home once. I want to clarify that. I've only seen it once in theaters. I've seen, I've watched clips of it though dozens of times since then but it's not on like any streaming platforms that i know of or that i have and i just don't feel like running it but i might because i really want to watch it but yeah this is definitely rubbery because it's kind of bent especially after watching the tasm movies today and uh, far from home it makes me just want to watch no way home again but yeah glider's cool i really like it um, definitely pretty solid, and it's the only real flaw that the figure has is the glider stand kind of breaking easy in this kind of being a problem with him standing in this clashing. Besides that, the figure's like a 10 out of 10. Now time to drop the camera and pray I don't accidentally end the recording like I did the last take. Welcome back. Uh, that went successful, and if the audio sounds different, it's because the uh, camera's lower. So uh, yeah, here is the Goblin in all of his glory. It's a great figure, but he has more accessories. He is actually holding one of the accessories right now. It's his pumpkin bomb, which looks really cool. And I will say, uh, I was worried when I put it in the hand at first that it was going to fall out. Now I'm worried I can never get it out of his hand because I put it in his hand. I've had this figure for like, two weeks now it has not left his hand it is like in there and i've tried getting it out and it doesn't really want to come out and i'm perfectly fine with it being in there but like you're not really going to begin too great of a look but it does have some nice sculpt work and a bit of green painted under there and like as you can see it stays in the hand really well because it's been in his hand for the past oh. That was close. It's been in his hand for the past two weeks. Um, and I don't think it's planning on leaving anytime soon. And his final accessory, because technically the other parts were already on him, is the masked head. And that looks phenomenal. Just get a zoom in on that. Oh my god. That looks great. That is beautiful. They went crazy when coming up with this mask design. Like, yeah, it covers Defoe's face, which arguably is perfect for Goblin in and of itself. But this mask just looks so cool. I will say it doesn't come with, like, an extra neck. So if you do have him with the masked head, there's going to be some skin showing. But you can kind of get a really comic look because he does have the uh, more comic accurate look with the more purple and the bag. And it just looks cool. And I, I don't know if this is a detail in the first movie or not, but the eyes are slight a greenish gold as opposed to a normal gold. I do like that. And the teeth are nice painted silver there. And you can kind of see a bit of texture in the uh, mouth area there because that's like a vent that... In some shots, you can see his mouth back there, which is really disturbing. But yeah, it looks great. That is... That's a beautiful helmet. And now we're going to take it off and never have it on the rest of the review. Because he comes with other accessories. The Defoe head, the go goggles, and the hood. And I'll just show you what that looks like on him. And it's on, right? Yeah, I want to say that's on. Yeah, that's on. When you put it on, you want the hood or the head in the hood, and then put it on, because there's literally no other way to get it on besides that. And it looks good. I feel like the hood is a bit too big. I definitely prefer the look of the unmasked head without the hood, but you do have the hood. You can't put the helmet in the hood. You'd have to cut a hole in the back, but I've seen someone cut the hole in the back, and it does look pretty cool. But yeah, you got one of the many Defoe options, but let's just get that hood off because it's covering up that beautiful, beautiful Defoe face. To get look number, what is this? Three of four. Oh, and that's 
Defoe with the goggles. And here's that hood. It's got a nice texture and everything, but we do not care about it because we're here for that Defoe face. And I was shocked that they gave him goggles to put on as opposed to gog like a goggled head. It doesn't really bother me, mostly because I don't have them with the goggles, but it's a cool look. We'll get close up in on that as well. Looks really good. The lenses are painted a... I want to say purple, but I'm not sure. And it's just a rubbery plastic, which goes all the way around. And actually looks pretty decent. But, of course, we're here for the grand reveal. Pop them bad boys off and see what I can only describe as a phenomenal likeness. That, that's Defoe right there. That is amazing. And I like that they didn't shy away from giving him that evil scowling smile that he has because the figure arts the likeness is phenomenal but the figure arts was like we're just gonna have him sad and like the thing about defoe's goblin is that he's like cackling he's laughing he's smiling with this chaotic smile and they capture that perfectly on marvel legends form here like that is amazing like even the hot toys knew to do that because the hot toys has it as well but that just looks great like that is defoe right there and the hair sculpted pretty well no paint but honestly you don't need it and like that's what kills me is that this looks so good because let's let's bring a wider shot here for a second like that just looks so good and it it's always a struggle between whether i want that beautiful mask or the defoe head because it just looks great like he captures just the goblinness without needing a mask and honestly, it just, he, he's, he was the perfect casting choice for Goblin. Like, there's no beating him. There's absolutely no beating him. Now I'm going to try to run through the body a bit faster, because number one, it's late as hell. And number two, I don't want this video, I don't want another 30 minute video. But at least this one makes sense, because it's a deluxe figure and has a lot more going on. But he does have a rubbery piece, which I've seen a lot of people take off to get the more stripped down goblin look but it is just a rubbery piece for the purple cloth which does look really good honestly it sits really well has a nice cloth texture has a bit of cuts and scrapes some holes in the front you can see through it then the strap going around got whatever these are and then his little goblin pouch with his uh pumpkin bombs which looks really nice strap goes up around the back as well but yeah he's got this little goblin pouch which is sculpted really well and has a little bit of nice texturing to it it's got this weird fold which is interesting but yeah looks really good and that's like all covering up this beautiful sculpt work on the torso you got that beautiful armor with like all the damaged parts and like the underneath of it showing with all the purple silver and gold which looks really cool then on the back, you got the goblin butt. Then to his arms, you got whatever these are. I don't know, canisters, missiles, I don't know. With some more like purple cloth wrapped around. Then, uh, I don't know, more missiles. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if he even ever uses any of this. Because he doesn't really fight too long in the final battle, which is my only complaint. I wish he was in the final battle a bit more. And come down to his hand, which is sculpted really well and has a nice texture. Then on the other arm, he's got some like purple plating, more battle damage throughout the armor, which looks nice. Then on this arm, he has more missiles, because you can never have too many missiles. And he has his blades, which are a nice soft plastic. I mean, I wouldn't be like ripping them out because they'll probably come out, but they are nice and bendable, but that also means that they will get warped and not sit perfectly straight but I might have done all right and I just throw them in a bag so yeah the sculpt is just beautiful you got all that nice purple throughout which I don't know just because that original design it was all green it did look cool but it just it needed more of the purple throughout and I think this design does it pretty well it's a nice integration of like the comic while keeping that movie design 
And you got more of the like purple, like silver and gold armor there with like the battle damage here showing more purple underneath. Which looks really cool. Some silver on the back. There are like silver plates on his butt for some reason. If that's even in focus, I wasn't actually even looking at the camera. But yeah, he got more of that nice detail to his knee pads, more of that silver detail. It just looks beautiful. He's beautifully sculpted. Then coming down to his legs, he got more of a symmetrical design. His legs are more symmetrical than the arms, which is interesting. He got some more purple armor back there. Not perfectly symmetrical, though. I do like that it looks like he just haphazardly tried his best to, like, slightly upgrade the suit while also fixing some damage it may have gotten during that insane, was it a hotel fight scene? I think it was a hotel or the penthouse, whatever it was. That fight scene was crazy. And I, th I think it's funny that he's a Tobey Maguire villain, yet he gave Tom Holland arguably more trauma because uh at least toby made it out with his aunt intact but yeah, and then he got his goblin boots i mean this figure's just gorgeous he's also cast in this nice metallic green but there isn't really any marbling that i see it's just it's great it's a great figure i don't know if any of that was even in focus but yeah, i mean come on look at that that is perfection he has a dumbbell joint at the head, which looks that far up, that far down, rotates and bobs, arm moves out that far, rotates around, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, which bends really far up, and both his hands rotate, but they're a little hard to rotate, especially this one because the blades, and then have a hinge in and out. He has a diaphragm joint, which moves not too far forward, but pretty far back, and the paint continues up there, rotates and bobs. His legs kick pretty far forward, and they have this weird, like, ratchety feel, which is odd, because, like, it, when you move it, it definitely has a more ratchety feel compared to most figures, which means he cannot kick back at all. See how it kind of, like, sprains springs back so yeah he's not kicking behind that uh the uh goblin dumb truck back there but he can do the splits which is nice considering the fact that he needs to spread those legs for the glider thigh rotation double jointed knee then you got a hinge up and down and a rocker which will be very useful for posing on the glider so overall He's got all the articulation you really need. It's not like Green Goblin's getting in some insane poses. He's just, he's got just enough posability in him to body slam a 17 or 18 year old teenager through multiple floors in a penthouse and then continue on to murder his aunt like not even five minutes later. That's just how Goblin rolls. And uh, you probably could fit the, because uh, this doesn't come with him. This is the uh, box thing. It comes with MJ. You could probably fit it in his hand if you took the grenade out, but I don't want to do that. I'm also worried if I do take it out, it's just going to shoot out and never be seen again. He only comes with one, so uh, be careful. But you could probably get him to hold the box, which is really cool. So yeah, that's about it for uh, Defoe articulation-wise. Now time for some size comparisons. How big is Defoe compared to the rest of Defoe's? Yeah, I'll see myself out with that one. For an average 6-inch scale comparison, here he is next to a Voyager-class Transformers figure and a Black Series figure. Here he is next to Rise of the Beasts Optimus Prime, whom I still need to review, and the Black Series new phase two clone trooper plain white version who is slightly deformed for me so he actually is pretty big although the black series skews a bit smaller but if you want to see some of the big boys here he is next to a for some seven inch scale comparisons here he is next to a dc mcfarlane and a jazzwares halo here he is next to black manta and halo 3 master chief um 
when does this movie come out? Because I have no clue. I think it might come out this week. I don't know. I only really want to see it because of Black Manta. And he honestly, surprisingly, kind of scales up to them. So he's, he's not a small boy. He's a pretty big lad. And for some more Spidey villains. Here he is next to another Raimi villain, Sandman. And Jake Gyllenhaal. They look pretty solid. We need a new Mysterio. This figure isn't the best. They look really cool. I love that. It's odd that the all three villains for uh, Tom Holland's trilogy were green. Because Vulture was green, Mysterio's green, Goblin's green. But they got greener as time went on. And these two basically just have the exact same color scheme. Again, we need a new Mysterio. This one's really outdated and a little inaccurate. But yeah. And because why not? Why not, right? Here he is next to Venom. Yeah, uh, wish Venom was actually in No Way Home a bit more. Because then number... I mean, he wasn't really a villain. So, but we, we were so close to a Sinister Six. But yeah, they look really cool together. And here's that Tom Holland figure. Oof. Again, go check out that previous review. Uh... He's still a pretty solid figure, despite all his flaws. But Defoe is definitely a better one. And finally, here he is next to the people he done wronged the most. Here he is next to that three-pack integrated suit, Spider-Man. So you can recreate that final battle where he's just laying blows on him, and he's not really doing anything. But I think he was kind of not doing anything on purpose. He wanted Peter to kill him. Until the goat came in, saved the day. Here he is next to Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man. And yeah, Defoe's big. Like, he is tall. Like, he towers over Tobey. Um, it's probably the armor, but still, he's, he's, he's not no small guy. He's got some size to him. So, uh, yeah. Do I recommend this figure? Absolutely. This isn't like the other ones, like Toby, like Tom, where it's like, I do recommend them, but there are some problems. This, buy this figure. Um, I don't have any other Green Goblin figures, and I was anxiously anticipating this dropping. I pre-ordered it, and uh, then I saw it in stores before the pre-order even shipped, so I canceled the pre-order and bought it, and... He might be a tad bit pricey. I forget if he was 40 or 50, but oh my god, is he worth it. Like, it is a great figure. Like, straight up figure-wise, there's no problems. Like, there really isn't any problems with just the base figure. The paint's great, the sculpt's great, the articulation's great, the likeness is great. He's just great. The only problems really arise from the glider. Which, even then, they're, like, kinda nitpicks. Because this figure's phenomenal. This is, like... This might be in the top ten figures of the year. I mean, I've got a lot of great ones this year, but this is definitely a standout. This is probably the best No Way Home figure as well. It's just great. It's great. Buy it. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not buying it. It's Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. What more do you want? I've seen people, like, strip it down, remove all the paint to get the more classic green look, and it looks pretty good. You still got, like, the extra armor bits, so hopefully they do release this guy, but in the normal full green look, because I will buy that as well. Like, it's it's a great figure. Buy it. That's It's a solid, like, 8, 9 out of 10 figure. It's amazing. I love it so much. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, check out my previous reviews. Uh, also, like, subscribe if you want. If you don't, that's alright. Uh, go check out my Instagram, MoonNXO. You can uh, talk to me there, get sneak peeks of upcoming reviews. I'll post something on my story, and then a month later it might get reviewed. But yeah, um, 
Also, check out my other Instagram, same pic of 2099, where I just upload, I try to upload the same pic of Spider-Man 2099 every day. Who knew that would be difficult? And before I leave us, I just want to acknowledge something that I saw today. I was looking up SH figure arts Spider-Man because I kind of want to get just a movie Spider-Man figure arts because I have the uh, Spider-Verse ones and they're great. And I saw someone selling the basic figure integrated suit from No Way Home on eBay named as the SH figure arts. And I'm like, who are you trying to fool, my guy? They don't look remotely the same. Like, you gotta just have no clue what you actually buy in to fall for that. Um, I'm assuming he must have just got the name of the Spider-Man wrong. Because it's not like he was selling it expensive either. But I'm like, something different. Anyway, hope you have a wonderful day. Um... And, uh, don't, uh, don't start up a great scientific company just to end up being overthrown by the board, which leads you to take goblin serum, which causes you to go insane and just really want to torment a random teenager named Peter Parker's life just as much as you want. Uh, that's the lesson for today. And uh, we we obviously got to do the Defoe memes before we go. You know, the, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. That's the 10 out of 10 Defoe impression there. And then, uh, what's another one? Uh, you can't do this to me. Wait, what is it? You can't do this to me. Wait, what's the line? Hold up. <laughs> Like, isn't it like, I built this company. Do you know how much I sacrificed? Then, uh, you know, you can try to recreate the drip check. Where he's, you know, like, checking his drip. There's so many great Defoe memes. And then the, uh, the classic, like, looking up meme. Ah, uh, Defoe's just great. He really is the goat. Anyway, peace.